ASMR card magic. Hey everyone, how are you? I hope I got you doing exceptionally well and welcome back to another highly requested, highly demanded ASMR card magic video. I want to thank you so much for the incredible support on the return of this series, and I'm so happy to be back with another one. Tonight, we have a jam-packed video planned for you all. First of all, if you enjoy these card magic videos, want to see more, want me to continue this series most of all, please give me your feedback. Let me know by giving me one of these. Give the video a like. It really does help out tremendously, and if you guys show your support, it'll make sure to let me know to continue the series. In this section of the video, I'm going to teach you some impressive card tricks that anyone can do at home. All you need is a deck of cards, and you can fool your friends, your family. We also have a huge announcement to make as I'm going to be giving away decks of cards to you, the audience, as a small gesture to thank you guys. 3 million subscribers. After this segment, we will be doing one and a half hours of my best card tricks ever. So, if you're just about ready to get started, sit back, relax, and let's go down to the card table. I hope you enjoy, and thank you for watching. Card magic video. We're going to be using my favorite deck of cards at the moment, which are the Aladdin playing cards. I love these cards so much. They're super smooth, super easy to use, very flexible, and they just overall are super fun to play with. Sealed. I've had this 
sealed for about says four or five years. So yeah, I'm giving away a sealed red deck of Aladdin playing cards to you guys. It's the first deck. And of course, the next deck we're giving away is a sealed blue deck of Aladdin playing cards. Personally, I prefer the blue, I think, a little bit more than the red, but they're both amazing. So, there you go. So, we're giving away a red deck and a blue deck of Aladdin playing cards. But, in celebration for this huge return to deck giveaways, I'm also giving away three extraordinarily special decks of cards. These are really rare. I'm actually not sure, to be honest, how much these cost. Um, but I've had these in my personal collection for years, and look, honestly, guys, I just want to give back to you guys, the community. Um, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys. So I think I'm okay with uh, giving these decks away. <laughs> What are we giving away? We're giving away the elusive, extremely special David Blaine Split Spades deck. And just look at the back design of these cards. I mean, these cards are considered to be, frankly, uh, like the, the S tier of card designs. I mean, it's one of those designs that the more you look at, the more you start to discover. So this is the black Split Spades deck by David Blaine. I'm pretty sure these are out of print. They stopped printing these years ago. And uh, completely sealed, of course. So we have the black one. A blue split spades deck. I'm a big fan of blue. Okay. And we have the red split spades. Honestly, they all look amazing. And uh, these decks of cards are really rare. But I'm okay with uh, giving it out to you guys. So if you want to go into the giveaway, just leave a comment down below telling me why you would want a deck of cards, which one you would want, and uh, what you would do with your deck of cards. And give the video a like and subscribe if you want. That would really help out. Um, I will announce the five winners in my next card magic video, which will be sometime pretty soon, at least no longer than a month from releasing this video. So yes, leave your comments, give the video a like, and uh, comment which deck of cards you'd want, why you'd want a deck of cards, and uh, what you would do with it. So yeah. Alright, I know that was a long intro, but it's so nice to have a uh, deck giveaways back on the channel. So, with that said, why don't we begin with our first card trick of the night. I'm going to teach you this card trick. Usually in these card magic videos, I try to impress you and fool you with card tricks. But we're going to be seeing a lot of those later on in the video. But I want to do something which I've been requested to do all the time, which is to actually teach you some card tricks that you can learn right now. No sleight of hand, no crazy flourishes or gimmicks, just easy card tricks that you can learn that will fool your friends. Okay. All right. So this first card trick I'm going to teach you. First, I'm going to perform it. Fool you with it first.
first, and then I'll teach you how it's done. All right. Sounds good. Let's get started. This is actually a card trick by David Blaine himself. Um, so I really hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and perform it for you first. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give the cards a bit of a mix. Like so. So you can see that all the cards go like sort of like a one, 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 one sort of format, right? Sort of out jog, in jog, out jog, and stuff like that. Pretty difficult to shuffle the cards like this. It took me quite a while to learn, but get the cards mixed. So the cards are shuffled. For this trick, I need two spectators. Okay, so I'd go up. You know, you can do this with one spectator, to be honest, but it's it's best if you have to. So you go up to one spectator and you say to them, I want you to cut a portion of cards from the top of the deck. They can choose. It's their life. It's a free choice. So let's say they come over and they cut off a portion of cards. Okay. Honestly, just a, a portion of cards. So I would take that portion and I would put it in their hand. So let's say that's right over here. I then turn to my second spectator and get them to select any card from the remaining cards in the deck. So let's say they chose, I don't know, let's say uh, this card right here. Remember the card. Don't forget it. So after that, I'll take their card and lose it in the deck. Okay. Now I would turn back to the first spectator who cut off a portion of cards. And I would say to them, I want you to start dealing cards off the portion of cards you cut and you can stop whenever you want. And wherever you stop, that card will indicate the position of the selected card. An indicator card is used in like gambling and cheating and in uh, card games. For example, if I hit a seven, then that would mean seven cards down will be uh, an ace, for example. Okay. So let's say they start dealing cards onto the table and they can honestly stop whenever they want. It's a free choice. Let's say they were to stop right here. Let's see what card they would get. A nine. That means that the nine will indicate the position of the selected card. So let's see what card they chose. If I count nine cards, the ninth card. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see what card they chose. The ten. Pretty cool trick, right? Let me show you how it's done. This is actually quite an interesting card trick. All you have to do to do this card trick is start by removing the four nines. Is you're going to place a random card in between each one of these cards. A random card in between each nine and a random card in between each eight. So what you should have after that setup is something like this. And you can start with the eights first and then the nines. In fact, you can just jumble them up however you want, as long as every different card is a 9 or an 8. It doesn't have to be in this order. It can be a 9, then a random card, then an 8, then a random card, then an 8, then a random card, then a 9. It doesn't have to be 
exactly like this, just as long as every other card is an 8 or a 9. Okay. So once you have your little setup, you're going to take that and place this packet of cards on the top of the deck. Now, you're ready to begin the trick. So go up to one of your spectators and say, I want you to cut off a portion of cards. Now, what I love about magic is a lot of it has to do with psychological uh, gestures. So if I say to you, cut off a portion of cards, most people, nine times out of ten, will cut off a packet of cards. And if they cut off a portion or a packet of cards, they're going to cut off a packet of cards that mostly has the nines and eights. Very rarely, if you say cut a portion of cards, they're going to cut off 50 cards of the deck. So you can say cut off a packet of cards or a portion of cards, they might cut off this many. And you know that pretty much all of these cards have alternating nines or eights. So you're going to hand this to your spectator. Now you're going to get your other spectator to pick any card from the remaining cards of the deck. So let's say they choose this card. And as you give them their card, and as they look at their card, in this case the three of clubs, you're going to count eight cards from the remaining part of the deck. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're obviously not going to count it out out loud. <laughs> Otherwise that would seem a bit sus. Just to yourself, just silently count out eight cards as they look at the card and show it to their friends. Take these eight cards in this hand and have them return their selection right here. Now you've just placed eight cards on top of their selection. Now you turn back to your first spectator. And all you're going to get them to do is literally deal cards off their packet of nines and eights and stop whenever they want. Okay? And you know that the top card is a nine or an eight. So all you need to do is keep track of which card being dealt is a nine or an eight. So we know that the top card starts the pattern. So we know it'll be a nine or an eight. This card will be random. This card will be a 9 or an 8. This card will be random. 9 or 8, and so on and so forth. And they can really stop whenever they want, but just make sure that they stop whilst there's still 9s and 8s remaining. So, let's say they start dealing cards, and they stop here. Well, we know that this card is a 9 or an 8. Okay, but what if they deal and stop on a card that is not a 9 or an 8? Well, all you'll say is, let's see what the next card is. In this case, it's a 9. And that's the trick, because now when they count 9 cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the ninth card will be their selection. But what if they stop on an 8, for example? They stop here. You'll say, let's check the next card. It's an 8. All you'll do is, you'll say, let's count 8 cards, and the card will be your selection. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The next card will be your card. So that's the trick. Pretty complicated, I know, but I wanted to give you guys a card trick that was actually seriously impressive and honestly will fool 99% of laymen, 99% of people who see this trick, because most card tricks that I teach you guys are easy to figure out, let's be honest, anyone can figure them out, so I wanted to give you guys an actual real proper magic trick. Okay. Beautiful. So, let's recap one more time. Start by having your eights and nines alternating at the top of the deck. Eight, random, eight, random, eight, random, eight, random. Then you want to have nine, random, nine, 
this packet, place it on top of the deck. Say to your first spectator, cut off a packet or a portion of cards. Turn to your other spectator, get them to pick a card. As they look at their card, count nine car eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have them look at their selection, the seven of spades, and place it back as the ninth card from the top. Turn to your first spectator, and you know that in this case the top card will be an eight or a nine, and say to start dealing cards from your packet and stop whenever you want. Remember which card is an eight or a nine. Let's say they stop here. You know that this card is an 8 or a 9. So make sure you say, let's see what card you dealt. An 8. That means the 8 will indicate the position of your card. So count 8 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this card will be the 7 of spades. So there you go. Just give it some practice. Try it a few times. And you should be good to go. The next trick I'm going to teach you all is one of the most impressive visual card tricks I've ever seen before. Okay? I want to first perform it and then teach you how it's done. So I'm going to first remove four cards randomly from the deck. Let's say like these four. I have two red cards two black cards. And what I would get the spectator to do is choose a red card and a black card. Let's say these. And I'd say, all right, these cards are going to be our gateway points. And I would just place the rest of the cards on top of them and place these in the middle. Next, I'd give the cards to the spectator and say to them, I want you to deal cards off the top of the deck. If you think a card is red, deal it on the red too. If you think a card is black, though, deal it on the black king. The trick is, you can't look at the cards. So you need to just use your own intuition, your own instinct. And just deal where you think a red card is and where a black card is. So let's say they start dealing like this. They think this is black, this is red, this is red, black, red, red, black, 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 red, 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 black, 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 red, black, red, black, black, red, red and we would stop in the middle by the time we get to our gateway point. So I would say to them, okay, let's switch it around. Now, if you think a card is red, deal it on the red six, but if you think a card is black, deal it on the black eight. So let's say they go out the rest of the deck, they go red, black, black, red, red. They do something like this. So let's recap, we shuffle the cards. We took out random cards. We made a red pile and a black pile. The spectator took the cards and, without me touching them, dealt cards without looking at them into piles of red and black. What are the chances that they actually got this right? It'd be basically zero. But let's check how they did. The first pile we have is a black pile. Well, all of these cards are indeed black. The next pile we have is a red pile. to just 
just take two cards, I meet them halfway like this. Then I'll split the cards. So I'm holding the red cards in one hand and the black cards in the other. So say to your spectator, choose a red card or a black card, it doesn't matter. Let's say they just choose these two. Place them face up in the middle and place one of the colors on top of the other. And this is when the trick is crazy. So give the cards to your spectator and let them deal cards to their choice. If they think a card is red, deal it here. If they think a card is black, deal it there. And you know that the top card is black, which means all of these cards are black. So let's say they start dealing something like this. It's a free choice. And just get them to stop at the halfway point. Now say to them, let's swap it around. So now if you think a card is black, deal it here. If you think a card is red, deal it there. And now at this point, all of these cards are red. So as they deal these cards, say they deal something like this. You know that all of the cards in this pile are actually correct. So you just take these cards and you show. And I like to sort of high roll this and slow it down because it's really impactful you show this reveal because it's actually crazy. Now here's when you have to do the only move. You're in this predicament where in the second pile all the cards after here are red and all the cards after here are black. So what I like to do is just take all of the cards except the last card, flip everything upside down, and then you've already just cleaned up everything and I just flip this over like this. Pretty crazy, right? So that's the, uh, I guess, intuition test. So to recap, split the deck, red and black. Take out two black cards, two red cards. I usually like to take it up in the middle, as I said, and just split the cards into black and red. Have your spectator choose a red card and a black card. Place it on top, in the middle and then place the remaining color on top. Give the cards to your spectator and have them literally go through until they hit the middle, dealing cards into red and black. They go through. And it's a free choice, which I love, and you can really stress this. It makes the effect so much more powerful. And now just get them to swap, so any card that is red, deal it here. Any card that is black, deal it there. Now all of these cards are black. So now you can really milk this. You can see, let's see how you went. Square up the cards, you know all the cards in this pile are correct. You can really slowly deal it one at a time. Do the same with the second pile, and they're just smacked at this point. And then for this pile, you just need to take all the cards except the bottom, flip them, spread, and done. And there you have it. There is the magic tutorial for tonight. Thank you all so much for watching this segment of the video. I'm so happy to be back with these card magic videos and at this point we're going to be doing some of my best magic tricks from my other videos. So sit back, relax, and uh, don't forget to participate, of course, in the deck giveaway. Leave a comment down below and uh, follow those instructions I set out earlier. And uh, yeah, let me know if those card tricks I taught you just now for any of your friends i'd be super keen to know and uh, yeah thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys very soon
welcome back to another ASMR card magic video. I hope I caught you doing well. Thank you so much for your incredible support on the first card trick video I did. series. Let me know by giving me one of these. I decided to zoom in, if you will, on the card table tonight for this video. I figured that this video, I wanted to teach you some card magic, some very basic, easy tricks that you can use to fool your friends and family. These card trick videos are so much fun to make, so before I teach you some card tricks, I think fool you with one or two, what do you say? I hope you really liked, by the way, that first trick I did. It was so much fun. Why don't we start off with a bang, shall we? So we opened up a fresh new, fresh, a fresh new pack of cards. And I want to try something interesting. Usually, when we do card tricks, a card is selected with the cards face down. However, this time, I thought it would be interesting to get you to choose a card face up. So let's say, as I'm going through the cards, you decide to choose any card, really any card at all. Let's say this one right here, the Five of Spades, and it can really be any card whatsoever. But let's say you are happy with the Five of Spades, what I would do is I would take it and I would cut it into the deck just like that. Now at this point, what I would do is conduct a little observation test. I know this is an ASMR video, but I want to make sure you're paying close attention. So what color is this card? The six of spades. Black, right? Very good. How about this card? of hearts. Red. Beautiful. And what color are the back of the cards? They were blue. Let's try that one more time, shall we? Another little observation test. What color is this card? spades. Black, right. And what color were the back of the cards? They were blue. Sorry, did you say that the cards were blue? Ah. Uh, see, that's where you'd be mistaken. Because 
because these cards are actually red. In fact, they've been red this entire time. This next trick, I want to tell you a little story that happened. This is a very interesting story based on a real event. Once upon a time, there were four brothers. Four jacks. Well, one day, these four brothers decided to rob a bank. They wanted all of the money in the bank vault. They were all desperate for money. So, the leader of the four brothers, the Jack of Spades, came up with a little plan, a mission, if you will, for all of them to become rich. The Jack of Spades devised a plan. how it worked. It's very simple. The goal was for the three other brothers to enter the bank at different levels so that way they could rob all of the bank vaults. Okay, so the Jack of Clubs, Jack of Hearts, Jack of Diamonds, the Jack of Spades went ahead with the highest. The first Jack entered the bank on the bottom floor. The second Jack entered towards the middle of the building. The third Jack entered towards near the top floor of the building. And the Jack of Spades waited on top of the building with the helicopter so that if there was something going wrong, he could get the helicopter ready and the other brothers could meet them there for their escape. So, the three other Jacks made their way inside of the building. we have our jacks here, why don't we see what else they can do, shall we? I'm going to take each jack, 
we're going to shuffle them into your deck one at a time we're going to make them disappear and the goal is to see if we can locate these four jacks Let's try something else. This next card trick is a true story that happened to me many years ago when I first picked up card magic. See, I've been doing card magic for a few years. But I was always casual when I was doing card magic. I've never been a professional. I've always been just a fan of magic rather than an expert myself. And when I was younger, I wanted to show my magic tricks in front of my fellow students and friends at school. So I performed this trick. I went up to a group of ladies and I said to one of them, well, it's a card trick, so pick a card, any card. She went ahead and chose a card at random. It was a free selection. And she went ahead and took a look at the card. After this point, I took the card and I shuffled it into the deck, just like this. And the card was lost. And I said, look, I really want to do this card trick, but I have to use the bathroom. Can you give me one or two minutes to just go use the bathroom? the trick. So I left my deck of cards on the table and I ran off to the bathroom. However, I had a friend of mine there who loved to pull pranks on me. So whilst I was gone to the loo, my friend came over and thought it would be a good idea to mess up my trick. So here's what he did. He took the cards whilst I was gone, took some cards face up and some cards face down and went ahead and shuffled the cards in this mishmash of face up and face down, just like this. It was an absolute mess. We had cards face up, we had cards face down. So I came back. And I saw exactly what my friend had done. I said, look, you've messed up my trick. We have cards face up to face down. We have cards face down to face up. We have cards all over the shop, cards back to back. And he said, Jojo, if you're a real magician, not only will you be able selection, her card. I said, no problem. So I came over to the deck and I just snapped. And that's all it took. We 
goes just like that. All of the cards from going face down and face up and mismatched are all now facing the right way up. Except for one card. Their selection. The six of diamonds. Hope you enjoy these card tricks. For this final segment of the video, I'm going to teach you a very interesting card trick that you can use to fool your friends. First let me perform the trick and then I'll teach you how it's done. First we need you to select a card. So let's say you chose this one right here. Here it is. Remember that card. Got it? Don't forget it. So here's what I'll do. I'll get you to place your card somewhere more or less in the middle. I'll get you to just insert your selection into the pack. Now what I'll do is something quite odd. I'm going to attempt to find your card, but I'll make it a lot harder for me. I'll take the cards behind my back and see if I can find your card. correctly. I think I just found your card. Just like that. So that's the trick. Now let me show you how it's done so you can fool all of your friends. Here's what you want to do. Start by taking one card and placing it upside down, face down, on the bottom of the deck. Next, go up to your spectator and get them to choose a card. Be careful not to flash this bottom card that's face up. So, let's say they choose this card right here. Now, here is when you do a little bit of misdirection. As they are looking at their selected card, all you're going to do is take the cards and flip them upside down. And trust me, as they're looking at their card, they won't see that at all. So, after they are done selecting their card, Just relax, hold the cards. Now I'll get them to place their card in the center of the deck. So you can take it and just very gently slide the card in. Be careful not to flash all of these cards face up, obviously. So get them to place their card in, just slide it in. And now all you have to do Take the cards behind your back, take this card face up, switch the cards back, and that's it. You've just performed a very impressive magic trick. So one last time. Have one card at the bottom of the deck reversed. Have them choose a card. As they're looking at their selection, 
flip the cards face down. Take their selection and carefully slide it into the deck. Be careful not to flash. Take the cards behind your back. Simply flip up the top card. Flip the deck upside down. And that's the trick. Super easy to do. Very effective. And you'll definitely get some reactions out of this. I want to thank you all so very much for watching tonight's video. I hope you found it entertaining and relaxing. And if you enjoyed, let me know by giving the video a like. Good night, everyone. started. We will be using tonight bicycle playing cards. First I'm going to shuffle the cards like so. spread out the cards. Now you can see we have red cards on one side and black cards on the other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the cards a strange mix. I'll put red cards here and black cards there. And what I'm going to do, as I said, is I'm going to take half of the card space up and off the cards face down and shuffle them face up to face down. I know it's a bit weird, but first I'll do the red cards face up to face down. I don't really recommend doing this. It can be a bit bothersome, if you will, especially the cleanup, but if you're bored, you can have some fun. face up to face down and I'll do the same thing here now with the black cards face up to face down like so Now, 
last thing I'll do is I'll take the top card of each pile. So for the red cards, the five of hearts, and just deal it to the bottom of the red pile. And for the black pile, the ace of spades, and just deal that to the bottom of the black pile. And now we're ready to begin. If I've learned something about of cards, it's that over the time of handling them I've noticed that a deck of cards has its own analytical clock just like how humans have their own natural biological clock a deck of cards is something extremely similar let me show you if I snap my fingers the condition of the deck will go back 15 seconds in time. So that was 15 seconds. Let's do one more and one more for a total of 45 seconds. Now if everything worked out correctly, what should have happened is that the Five of Hearts and the Ace of Spades have now returned to the top their piles. Let's try taking it a step further, shall we? If I go 15 seconds more back in time, then all of the black cards from being face up and face down are now reversed back. They're all facing the same way. If I go 15 seconds more back in time, now all the red cards go back facing the same way as well. And if I go 15, 30, even 45 more seconds back in time, well now what we have here is a shuffled pack of cards with the colors randomly distributed throughout the pack. Now, we're going to attempt to do something here which may be considered extraordinary. I'm going to give the cards a mix like this. And essentially I'm going to try and locate the four aces. to look at this selection you've made. I'll turn around, don't worry, I won't look. You got it? Please don't forget it, otherwise it will make for a truly lousy <laughs> trick. And what I would get for you to do is to take your selection
four piles or so. They can be roughly even if you'd like. Let's say something like this. Okay. And we have, of course, our four aces. And what I would say to you is, I want you to place the deck box on one of these four piles. So you could freely choose. Let's say you chose, I don't know, this pile. It's really a free choice. This would then become what's called as the leading pile. And as the leading pile, what we would do is place it off to the side like this. Now, I'll take the four aces. One, two, three, four. And place them on top of the piles. Now, in gambling, what we can do is something called cheating. Where watch. I'm going to invisibly take each ace. Take the three aces that I just dealt and place them on my pile right here, the dealer's pile. You see that moment right there? All four aces transfer to my pile. But look, I am not a complete heartless monster. I wanted to ensure that you would do well as well. So let's see what you got. You chose the Jack of Hearts. Well, I also want to make sure that you do well in this game. something which is pretty unbelievable. You'll notice that's a bit of a trend. I want you to select any card from this deck. Let's say it's this one. Okay. I want you to remember this card. What I'll do is I'll take your selection and it somewhere in the middle of the deck. Now, let's say after all of this shuffling that I do here, that your card were to appear in the, let's say, top half of the deck. That could have just been by sheer chance that after that shuffling, your card appeared in the top half, right? How about, let's say, your card were to appear in the top five cards of the deck. Now that would be pretty incredible. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> if your card appeared in the top five, that'd be pretty sick, wouldn't you say? It's starting to get a little bit crazy. So, let's see if your card appeared in the top five. I'm going to show you them one by one and let me know if they appeared there. We have the Jack of Spades. We have the Queen of Hearts. Might have been the king, might have been the queen, might have been that. 
this. I'll figure out what your card is. Watch. Imagine I pluck out your card invisibly. Imagine I'm holding your selection right here. You can see the blue patterned back. You can see the bicycle patterns, all the intricate designs of the blue color, the border. Now imagine I turn that card face up. So imagine you can see the colors on that card face up. Now, watch as I insert your selection face up into the middle of the deck. Because at that very moment, instead of having five cards, I now only have four. One card vanishes. There's only one place your card can be. Face up. down card. It can be whatever you'd like. Let's say you chose the Jack of Hearts. I think you chose this card before. I'm going to take the Jack of Hearts and place it somewhere in the middle. Actually, I'll place it exactly, exactly in the center of the deck. snap my finger, every card in this deck will go face up except your jack of hearts. No camera tricks by the way before anyone mentions. And now, every card in the deck goes face up, with the exception of one. <laughs> no jack of hearts. you've been enjoying our little card show tonight. For this next trick, I need you to select any card from this deck. Let's say you were to choose this one right here.
You got it? Okay. I'm gonna take your card. And what I would say to you is, cut the cards wherever you'd like. So let's say you come over and you cut the cards. And I would say for you to complete the cut. Free choice, really, wherever you'd like. Now, what we're going to do is something incredible. When I snap my fingers, this trick one more time and break the magician's code of conduct and they say never really repeat a trick twice but I'm going to here I want you to say stop whenever you want let's say you want to choose you said stop here I would get you to remember this card and once again just like the jack of clubs I will change mess this one up. Yeah, sorry. Um, remember in the beginning when I said I might be a bit sloppy? This is what I was talking about. Um, well, we do have one red card over here. What was your card? Oh, it was that. Okay, well, no worries. I'll just change the Jack of Clubs, your first selection, into your new selection. you enjoyed tonight's little magic show. I'm going to, as promised at the start of the video, end it off with a card trick tutorial that you can use to fool your friends, fool your family, fool your co-workers, your friends at school, whatever. So, first let me perform the trick. So what I would say is, to my spectator, to make four piles of cards, they can be roughly even, it doesn't really matter, so let's say they come over and they make one, two, three, four piles, and I would say to them, let's say we pick, I don't know, this pile, you're going to take one, two, three cards off the top to the bottom, everything worked out correctly this is the last pile right this pile should now have an ace at the top pretty cool right but that's not all you were so good that you were actually able to get not just 
just that one ace, but ace number two, ace number three, and ace number four. So that's the trick. Now, let me teach you how it's done. First, you need a deck of cards, obviously. <laughs> but you don't have to use the four aces, you can use any four of a kind. That suits you. Start by taking the four aces out from the deck and placing them on top, like so. Go to your spectator and ask for them to make four piles of cards. So they come over and make four piles. But you know secretly that this last pile has the four aces. And now, all you do is one pile at a time, do exactly as I did. But make sure that the pile with the four aces is the last pile that you do this. So for demonstration, I'll have these face up so you can track the aces. So, you can choose these three piles in any order you'd like. Just remember that the pile with the aces is the last. So you go to a pile, you say take the top three cards off from the top, put them to the bottom, deal one, two, three. And if you just do this three times, what we're just doing is loading an ace every time. Well, sorry, we're loading a indifferent card on top of the ace. You just do this three times. And by the time you get to our pile with the aces, all of the dirty work has been done. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's the trick. So, practice it. Run through it maybe once or twice. And then let me know how you go. You can pull it out nice and around with it. Cuts, no corners that are chipped, anything. It's really... What I'm going to try to do is see if I can just cut to an ace. This isn't magic, this is really just practice for many hours, and I actually might get this wrong, so bear with me. I'm just going to come over to the deck and try to cut straight to an ace, just like that. And you'll notice if I were to have gone one card, just one card too few, or one card too many, I would have not cut to that ace. So, let's try it again. I'm going to square up the cards and just come over and just cut straight to an ace. Again, one card too few, one card too many. I would have not cut to that ace. And I actually might get this wrong, to be honest with you. Oh, lucky me. Again, one card too few, one card too many. I would have not hit that ace. The final ace, I think, is going to be 20th, 21st position, maybe. 20th position. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, first. Pretty good. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, and you'd like to see more of these videos, give this one a like. And until next time, I'll see you later.